There are actually a lot of misconceptions about these little boosts right over here called reserves. When is actually the best time to use them? And should you buy these up with gems or not? And honestly, whether or not you do that depends on a bunch of factors, which we're going to talk about in this video, because guess what? It's that time of year where the zenith of power is here, and... There's a lot of value to having some reserves on hand, so stick around in this video for a breakdown of the actual best ways to use your reserves with some really crazy calculations if you're going to spend a ton of gems. Hello my friends and welcome back. I'm Chisco Gaming and today's video is sponsored by the makers of Rise of Kingdoms. And I was inspired to make this video by none other than Fluffy Pony who happens to be at the top of the leaderboard for the Zenith of Power and by the way has one of the most well-run accounts hands down in Rise of Kingdoms. It's actually crazy. And you know, I should say well-run Kraken accounts because the dude is, uh, let's see here. If I go to individual power... Yeah, 610 million power. Totally nuts. But that's neither here nor there. Let's talk about the best uses of reserves. And good news, if you are a free-to-play player or a low spender, the absolute best use of these reserves is to queue up extra troops and have them finish during an event. So the best example of that is for a Mightiest Governor or a Zenith of Power, if you're pushing for that leading up to it. You queue up 50k reserves, you let those cook, and then boom, right when the event lands, you don't have to use any speed ups, and you get a ton of credit towards something like Mightiest Governor for gaining power or a Zenith of Power. The downside of that is that while you're letting all those cook up for a while, the problem is you can't actually complete troop training for all kinds of events and quests that show up, and you would actually be shocked how much incremental value you get over time doing things like quests to train a small amount of troops for some sovereign keys, which shows up every other week, I feel. So there's a lot of value to queuing up reserves in order to win events, but you lose out on some value as well. The other major way you can use reserves if you already have them, whether you've been buying bundles or you've just been getting them from events, is to accelerate your training during an event where your time with titles or buffs is limited. So for example, Zenith of Power is a perfect um, scenario where you have a lot of people trying to gain power. And if your kingdom is large, there's going to be a long line for the Duke buff. And that buff is going to give you 10% training speed. In addition, we've also got Mobilize for War running right now. That's a kingdom buff, which gives you training speed. So the point that I'm trying to make is that if your availability of both Duke and the Kingdom buff overlapping is going to be limited, reserves are a great time to jam out a bunch of troops with speed ups. And that's typically how you see me training in videos where I'm gaining, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 million power in a training session, which is a lot. I think I only did 60 like once. But point I'm trying to make is that that is... For most people, the most common use of reserves, I have a kingdom title, my time is limited with that kingdom title, we got a great rune and a buff going, let's jam out a ton of troops right here and now. That's the way I use reserves, that's the way most people use the reserves. But it begs the question, well, wait a minute, Shisco, what about reserves in the VIP shop? If you're high enough VIP, should you spend the gems on these reserves? And the answer is, weirdly enough, no, the amount of days of speed ups you save by virtue of having the Duke is about, I think it's like two days, which two days worth of speed ups. I mean, you can see here if I'm buying them at a discount, it's like 1200 gems. Well, gosh, in that case, you don't want to use the reserves. You'd much rather just train and eat the cost of, you know, training without the title if you have to in order to, um, you know, save a small amount of gems compared to buying reserves. It's not that much. And I suppose if you were low on time and you don't care, you got to be a special kind of whale to be, <laughs> I don't know, low on time and not care, right? So what about whales though? And this is where things get weird. In fact, let's not talk about whales. Let's talk about krakens. So should a kraken buy these reserves? And should they even consider 
gemming these reserves. Now, this is where things get interesting and weird, and this gets into whale math that most people will never need, but strap yourselves in for a little bit of entertainment. You see, the advantage of using a boost is that although it costs you gems, you actually save gems by buying higher denominations of speed ups. So this 30-day speed up is 40,000 gems, okay, whereas this seven-day speed up is 10,000 gems. So it's easy to see here, oh, wait a minute, I'm getting two days of speed ups for free. So when I buy this four times, that's 40,000 gems, that's 28 days of speed ups, and you get the same sorts of economy um, when you go from a three day to a seven day or a one day to a three day and so on. So buying lower quantities of speed ups always cost you more per minute of speed up. Now this is where things get interesting because when you use a 50K reserve, which lets you train a whole bunch more troops, 52,000 at a time, well, now you start buying a 30-day speed up, and depending on your other buffs, you might buy a 7-day speed or some 3-day speeds, and the game will do this for you automatically. So let's talk about how the game uses gems if you're gemming stuff, and this is kind of weird. So what the game is going to do is it's going to try to be efficient where it can, but it'll be inefficient if it has to in order to get the job done. So here, the gem cost per troop is relatively high compared to if I do the very weird thing of bringing this slider to almost exactly one day or being slightly under one day. The gem cost per troop ends up being lower. And you might think, well, how important is that? Well, if you're a big crack in gemming troops, this ends up being super relevant. Like you save a ton of gems overall um, for your training. It's it's actually shocking how much you can save by just messing with this slider until it's exactly a day or just under a day like that. Boom. So the gem cost per troop is better like this than it is if I have that slider all the way to the right and you just push that instant button over and over and over and we know that this 1,500 gems is the gem cost it would be for a one day speed up if that's what you're doing. But like I said, if you pop one of these 50K reserves, the math gets a little bit more interesting. And the less buffed you are when you're training, the more you actually might end up saving by using a 50K expansion. So again, inspired by Fluffy Pony, I went in and I did this math uh, and I chatted with him a bunch about what are the implications of this? And I'll put that up on the screen. But if you have the Ark of Osiris, you know, top four theme, and you have the Duke, a 15% rune, you switched your civilization, you got the kingdom buffs, you got the kingdom holy sites, like all the things that give you training speed, you'd have about 103% training speed boost. And in that situation, whether you just smash the gem button at 1,461 troops... Uh, for the one day speed up exactly, or you use the 50k reserves, the end result is almost the same. But you definitely should not gem the 20k reserves. The 20k reserves, you end up spending literally a couple hundred dollars more um, per million T5 troops that you train. And so I tried to show that number all the way on the right to show like how much scale do we have. So we have the total troops, the gem cost for those troops, what the gem cost is for reserves, um, and then the gem cost per troop. And like, obviously, the lower the gem cost per troop, the better. Then I did the gems per million T5, or in other words, how many gems am I saving compared to just bringing the slider to that, in this top number, it's you know 1,461, the one day speed up amount. Now, if you don't have the Ark of Osiris city theme, the math changes ever so slightly where you might say, hey, the gemming the 50k reserves is slightly better. Per million T5, I'm saving 1,200 gems. Well, you know, look, <laughs> is it worth gemming the reserves to be ready for this moment where maybe I would do that? Probably not. Because if you don't end up using the reserves in this way, they're just inefficient. And if you're training with just a 10% rune and you don't have the Arc City theme, now it gets a little more interesting right? Now you're looking at 95% training speed total, and every million troops you train, you save about 
8,376 gems. This is, uh, that's maybe way more precise than it ought to be. Like, I I think this number is right, um, but I had to use a calculator. I went to rockcalculator.com, not sponsored by them, but I don't know. I use it and I find it helpful. So I'll shout them out. Um, 8,376 gems saved per million tier five troops that you gem. If you have the 50K reserves um, and you're buying them at that 90% discount price, so 5,000 a reserve. Now, again, the I think you'd, you'd have to do the math, but like the weaker your rune situation is or buff situation is, the more advantageous it becomes to actually consider using the 50K reserve. The 20K reserve never ends up being value, which you can buy again in the VIP shop, but not from the regular shop, which I can show you, by the way. Weirdly enough, like you can't actually buy reserves at full price. So the VIP shop shows you the discounted price, but they're they're not really there for the full price. So again, what what should us commoners use these reserves for? I think the best use of reserves is either training in advance for an event so that the training finishes on the event date, or one cool thing you can do is if you don't want your training to finish, but you have an event that is related to using speed ups, you can you can really take advantage of a 50k expansion. You can do some of your training during an event that rewards you for using speed ups and still try to have it finish on like an event day. That's an option. Um, and the other major use is kind of like I've done here to cap off a training session where I know I'm going to speed them up in the end, presumably. Or I guess I could wait until, like, you know, Eve of the Crusade training day. That's another good example of when you queue up and you wait. Um, and the final thing is, if you're not gemming, and you need to gain power in a hurry. So, Zenith the power is here. That's why we're making this video. If I need to gain power super fast, because I get pushed, or I wait to the last minute, because I'm a dum dumb or whatever, like, or I'm risking it, then, like, the 50k expansions are super value, for blasting through speed ups, less so for gems, because gems you can just fly through in a hurry. I mean, it is shocking how much damage you can do to your gem count. But if you're using speed ups, which I would be, um, and I need to just go fast, in that case, those 50k reserves help me gain a lot of power really fast. And there's the value. So TLDR, should most people gem reserves? No. Even the biggest of Krakens probably shouldn't gem the reserves unless you think you're going to be training in a really disadvantaged way and you know for sure you're going to do it. Like you're definitely going to gem out the troops. Then you could earn back a small amount of gems worth of value, which is why I think it's probably not worth the risk, which makes me honestly wonder. Like I actually feel like the gem cost of these items should go down. Actually, I think that given that it doesn't make sense to to use them, unless I've done my thinking uh, here is wrong, I actually think they should drop the cost of these. I would drop the cost by like, honestly, 50% of this 90% value. So like these 20K reserves should maybe be 1,000 gems tops. These 50K reserves should maybe be 2,500 gems tops. A and even then it might be kind of expensive, but there should be like, good reason to get these regularly. I feel like that should be true of most things in the shop. Like the price should be such that you kind of want to jam them regularly. Um, but for things like the blueprint patterns and so on, even as a pretty big spender, they're, they're too expensive for me. I'll stick to the Holy Knight's Treasure and uh, Hunt for History and all those events. If you enjoyed the vid, throw a like on here, consider subscribing. If you want to see when I trained troops recently, like last night, <laughs> and we were talking about reserves, card will be in the end screen. Alternatively, if you want to see one of the strongest players in the game by power, that's Yoda 808, J just blast through an astronomic amount of gems using the technique I described, bringing the slider to about a day. Uh, check the card in the end screen. It is just totally nuts watching him train.